really hot though. All right, let's go to the park. Okay, now we're at the park here in Rome. Here, let me zoom on this. So walking back up the hill from the piazza, we're now at the Villa Borghese Park. This public park contains museums, several villas, such as the Villa Medici and the Villa Giulia. It has multiple gardens and it's about 197 acres. Actually the third largest public park in Rome. Yeah, there's parrots up there. So this is called the Fountain of Del Luce. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that all wrong. Not much of a fountain. This looks like a restaurant. Actually, this is called Casina Valadier. It's one of the most renowned restaurants in Rome. Probably expensive too. Oh, and this is the Pillar of Antonius, built in the 2nd century. Walking through the park, we spotted this clock called the Hydrochronometer. It's a water clock created in 1867, which uses the flow of water to measure time. It's made of cast iron designed like tree trunks and it has four dials visible in every direction and the most important thing is it still works 24 7. Hydro car, hydro... Hydro phenomenon. Hydro phenomenon. <laughs> no, no matter. It's, uh, <laughs> a water clock. it's a clock that's powered by water. <laughs> it's the fountain of Pencheria. It's not as nice as Madrid. Madrid is like really good. But Hyde Park, oh man, I don't know. But so far Madrid is like has the best park. This park feels surprisingly huge sure. because of all the landmarks in it. There's just so many. But like I said, if I was to rank the parks I saw on this trip, the Retiro Park in Madrid is number one, then this one, and lastly would be Hyde Park in London. By the Museum of Carlo Bellotti. It's a fountain of Fiosio. Passing through this arch called the Arco de Settimio Severo, you will come across this temple called the Temple of Ascolapius, which I know I'm not pronouncing correctly, but it was built between 1785 and 1792 and was said to be in the memory of the destroyed ancient temple of the god of medicine. As you can see, the temple is surrounded by this lake, most likely man made, and the lake in the temple is not that big but you can still rent a boat and still enjoy the lake. Right next to the temple is this, the Giardino del Lago. I have no idea what its purpose or what it's about. I just can't find any information about this garden. The National Museum of Modern Art. Yes, this is still part of the park. The National Gallery of Modern Art was established in 1883. It hosts more than 5,000 artworks, both sculptures and paintings from world-renowned artists like Van Gogh, Monet, and Cezanne. Like the Villa Medici, as we were about to go see what's inside this museum, we changed our minds and eventually ended up using just the restroom again. Rome's dog park. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's actually nice, right? I wasn't kidding. It's really a dog park. Yeah, I think this is the backside of the Global Theater. Is right here. This globe theater is a full-scale replica of Shakespeare's globe we saw in London and the theater puts on performances during the summer months. Let's see if this is the back side. Piazza di Siena was created in the late 18th century it's a plaza that hosts local and international equestrian competitions from the early 1900s. Today they host the Piazza de Siena International Horse Competition and they've been doing that since 1926. Not far from the piazza is this huge monument of Umberto I mounted on a horse. The statue is made of bronze and is about 15 meters high. That's like 50 feet and that's including the marble base. Umberto I was the king of Italy from 1844 all the way to his assassination in 1900. Anyway, other figures in this monument symbolizes his compassion and bravery in battle. And more specifically, the figure on the left below the horse represents Italy crying for the killed king. Finally, the last place in the park we went to, the Borghese Gallery. 
This place was built for the Cardinal Tipione Borghese at his country villa in the 17th century. Well, after some time, this manor has become an art museum, which houses the Borghese's vast collections of sculptures, paintings, and antiques, dating back to the 1st and 3rd centuries. We actually wanted to see the museum, but we found out that you must book the tickets online in advance due to the space limitations of the villa. Although there were people who looked like ticket scalpers right outside the museum selling tickets, we weren't really that desperate to get in. Plus, they probably doubled the price anyway. It's too bad because I think they have Picasso inside. So you're probably wondering why almost all the restaurants we go to are closed. Well, it's because they have their own hours of service here. And as far as I know, cafes open early in the morning, but they only serve pastries or some kind of sweets. And restaurants normally open at 12 noon and closes at 3 in the afternoon. And then it reopens again at around 7 in the evening. At this moment, I believe it's just past 3 and we really need to find a place to have lunch. So we ended up here. It's the only place that we found that's open. So we're gonna have um, a late lunch. It's an Italian beer. It's a little bitter, but um, and also sweet. It's kind of weird. I ordered the calzone, this one. I also ordered the bezuto. And I also ordered two more. Um, I don't know what it's called. Mm, it has like, um, I mean, I don't know what it's called. You'll see it. It's called parmesana with eggplant. I got this from the buffet they had set up inside the restaurant. I figured I need to eat some veggies, and this looks a little healthy. And these are the calzone. That one looks really good too. It's the baked calzone ham and mozzarella. I'm gonna move that. This is an eggplant calzone. It's actually called pisotto. It's pisotto eggplant with ham and mozzarella. And that is the rice bowl with eggplant, with eggplant in there. This one came from the buffet as well. I just have to open that to see what's inside. Calzone originated in Naples in the 18th century. It's somewhat related to pizza, and people normally eat this standing up or walking. This one, by the way, is actually a traditional calzone. Right in the center. Oh, look at that. Ham and uh, some mozzarella cheese in there. The cheese is right here. Mm. I'm gonna work on this. This is actually good. He, she's nice enough to have me try everything first. <laughs> That's his, um best traveling companion. <laughs> this is actually good. Um, what is this called? Calzone. Mm. Okay, I'll put it here. here. I'm gonna try the eggplant. Eggplant parmesan or parmigiana di melanzane is a classic southern Italian dish where the eggplant is fried in olive oil and layered with tomato sauce and mozzarella cheese. But it's eggplant with like parmesan, with parmigiana, with, with parmesan cheese. And um, for sure this is tomato. <laughs> Here, let me get a close up on that. Right? It looks really good. Mmm. Okay. Oh my god. That is good. It's like really fresh tomatoes, ma'am. Oh, ma'am. Mm. You can tell it's not from the can. It'll be stupid if it was from the can, right? But it really tastes like fresh. This one's really good. You can see the cheese here. See? The cheese is right in there. Inside the eggplant. And then, um, let me try this one. Oh no, that's okay. I tried the eggplant, um, risotto. 
Now I'm not really sure what the difference is between a pizzotto and a calzone. They look exactly the same, except this one had eggplant. Let me um, break this in half too, because we share everything. There's like ham in there too. Oh yeah, there's like ham. Oh my gosh. Uh, nice. That is. Oh my goodness. It's a good, nice sandwich right here. Ham, cheese, and um, eggplant. On a really nice, bread. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> baked bread. Here. Mm. Mm. Oh wow, that works really well. Too. My hands are clean. This too, like, it's like it's hard to compare because it's a different ham, and you can I can tell I can distinguish the taste. It's different. I don't know, it's hard. This is really tasty. Really, really tasty. This one kind of has um. Maybe it's because of the um eggplant. Maybe that's what it tastes, or maybe it's the ham that's giving it a different kind of taste. But they're both good here. So you can try this. I'm gonna switch to this last one right here. This is the um Arancini. I also got this from the buffet. It's rice balls stuffed with meat, mozzarella cheese, eggplant in this case, then it's all coated with breadcrumbs and then deep fried. Arancini originated in Sicily back in the 10th century and has become one of the traditional foods served here in Italy. Supposedly the, um, the eggplant is inside this with, uh, with rice. Let's break this in half. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, there is rice. It's like eggplant with some, I think that's cheese. There is cheese in there and this, uh, this is rice. The outer layer is, is crunchy. But at the same time, it's um, it's soft too. Okay, let's try this. Just the rice by itself. Oh man. Oh. Oh man. Thank you. Bye. Wow, the rice is good. Hmm. Stupid, but everything I say here is good because it, it is good, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like a paella kind of the taste, right? It's really interesting, really, really interesting. The rice is just perfectly cooked. I don't know how the hell they made this. Yeah, you, you put the stuff inside first, and then you put the rice and that is cooked, and then. We fry, I don't know. Let me um, have a bit, some of this eggplant. There you go. I just finish off my, put everything on my plate. Mix everything up. Hmm. Which one do you like better? Okay, I haven't tried this one yet. Oh. I think I like the eggplant. Which one do you like the best? Oh man, um, that's a good question. They all taste different. It's not like the um, pasta that we had last night. Yeah. When you uh, we mix it all together, it started to taste the same. Although, um, I think I have to agree with you on the. Um, no, I have to agree with you with the pasta last night. The um. <clears throat> the pepper, the pepe, uh -huh. the, the pepe, uh, the pepper, the cheese and pepper, I think that's pretty good. It's very simple and it's really good. So which one do I like best? Um, I would have to say it's yeah. a tie between the calzone and the arancini. The calzone, although simple, it was just perfectly tasty. And the arancini was surprisingly different and bursting with flavor. I don't know if this has mushrooms. All right, we're back at the museum, the National Museum of Rome, and 
we are gonna head in and check out this place. Um, so we got the tickets, if it's gonna focus here. This is the... Uh, oh yeah. Museum of Natural... The National Museum of Rome. There you go. We were here this morning, but changed our minds because we wanted to maximize our time throughout the day. But like I said, we'll come back here later today, and here we are. What sculpture is this? Yep. I don't know what this is, but this is the first sculpture. Let's look at Saul's sculptures here. 40 AC. Really? So the National Roman Museum has several branches throughout the city of Rome, meaning several buildings. As the name suggests, it exhibits a lot of pre- and early history of Rome, from sculptures, artifacts, and archaeological materials found from excavations. Basically, if you like Roman history, you'll love this museum. Pieces of their language before. That's amazing. Somebody actually wrote that. If you read it, it's actually a Roman calendar. <laughs> it's not their alphabet or any. But it's pretty close. It's words. These sculptures are from 40 to 30 BC. They're old. This block of stone is from the 7, 7 BC. It's uh, Latin, huh? Yes. What? What? Oh my God! This is AD one. This is supposed to be Nero. Alexander the Great. They um, they didn't finish this. <laughs> it's like David. This guy's a boxer. That is um resting. That's what it says. It's all wrapped in gold. This is where they store the um, coins, ancient coins. They're huge. Look at my hand. Let's see how far that. It's big. The coin is about this big. If you're gonna hold it, I don't know if you can put that in your pocket. That one's pretty big too. It looks like those chocolate coins. It's amazing. That one definitely is a chocolate coin. This one's really cool because they're like chocolate colored, but what's really cool about it is that it's huge, dude. Like, how do you put this in your pocket before? I mean, how do you carry this coins? Oh my gosh, look, it's get, it gets bigger. The mother of all coins. <laughs> Dude, this is just crazy. Look at that. It's, it's bigger than my hand. See, it's in a plate still. They haven't even, like, cut it out. It's gold bars. Man. These are euros now. These are huge too. This is the reason why a lot of them died of lead poisoning. This museum is full of Rome's history, and the priceless artifacts here are just amazing to see. Even if you know Rome's history, you'll still be in awe of what you'll learn from this museum. Anyway, while I was exploring and actually enjoying myself, I suddenly felt really tired. I think this trip from the time we started in London has finally caught up with me. Yeah, After we left the museum, we headed back to our hotel just to rest a bit and planned to go out and have dinner. But I ended up falling asleep and eventually continued on sleeping throughout the night. Well, I guess it was a good thing because our plan for tomorrow is going to be really tiring. We're going to visit the Pantheon, take a tour of the Vatican City, exploring St. Peter's Basilica, the Sistine Chapel and more. Oh, and yes, of course, eating amazing food along the way.